Ryan Grimm. Ryan Grimm is actually covering this. Ryan Grimm is covering this in some detail. He says, when it comes to Larry Elder, why are we talking about these abuse allegations? So apparently Larry Elder is a conservative radio commentator in California. He has some allegations against him by an ex fiance that said that he pushed her in the hallway, that he had checked to see if the gun was loaded in front of her in a menacing way. He's a heavy pot user, and he wanted her to buy marijuana for him. So those are the abuse allegations by the ex fiance against Larry Elder. Now, Ryan Grimm says that we should be, as uh, audience, as a public, we should be very concerned that we're talking about Larry Elder at all. Why are we even talking about Larry Elder, the radio conservative commentator? So you got, you know, 40, 30 or so, you know, people who are running for, well, let's just go down the list, okay? You got H Holly L. Bade, you got John R. Drake, Patrick Kilpatrick, Jacqueline McGowan, Kevin Pafrath. These are all the Democrats. Armando Perez Serrato, Brandon M. Ross, Joel Ventresca, Daniel Watts, David Alexander Bramante, John Cox, Larry A. Elder, Kevin L. Falconer, Rhonda Furin, Ted Gaines, Sam L. Gallucci, David Hilberg, Caitlin Jen Jenner, Kevin Kiley, Chelsea Slim Killens, Jenny Ray LaRue, Steve Chavez Lodge, David Lozano, Diego Martinez, Daniel Mercury, D Robert C. Newman II, Doug Ose, Sarah Stevens, Denver Stone, Denver Stoner, and some more. I'll read more of that list, but that's one of them are going to become governor. Which one? It could be any one of them. Any one of them. I feel like this race is wide the fuck open because my top four candidates, here's who, let's assume Gavin Newsom gets recalled. So who's going to become the governor of California? Well, it's either Caitlyn Jenner, you know, welcome Caitlyn Jenner, Governor Caitlyn Jenner. Well, welcome to Kapilovitz or Larry Elders or Pafrath. So Kapilovitz, I like him, Green Party guy. Larry Elders, he's already the conservative Republican darling. Pafrath, this motherfucker's a YouTuber too. Very popular YouTuber. So Larry Elders, Pafrath, they've already got name recognition, and they've already got a YouTube base of supporters, possibly, I don't know, but they got some money, they got some influence. Dan Kapilovitz, I'm putting him as the top four. These are the four people that I'm paying attention to. So, you know, Gavin Newsom is out. Why? Because Larry Elders is about to come in. The Republicans are so fucking excited about throwing this Democrat out and getting Larry Elders in there, right? That's the whole thing about a recall election is that it's exciting. You throw the damn bomb out. We're going to throw the damn bomb out. So let's listen to a report about the Larry Elder abuse allegations from his ex-fiance. In the state recall election, conservative talk show host Larry Elder's ex-fiance claims he physically and emotionally abused her. KCAL 9 political reporter Tom Wade is here now with the interview, plus another debate tonight with some notable no-shows, Tom. Yeah, Juan and Pat, I think we're going to see just a lot of drama, really, leading up to the recall election coming, you know, day to day. And that's right. Once again, Larry Elder did not show up at this debate, but he is defending himself against these new allegations tonight. Meanwhile, the other Republican frontrunners trained their attacks mostly on Governor Newsom. I'm against vaccine mandates. It would be hard to imagine a greater recipe for distrust than the one that Gavin Newsom has followed. Our schools should have been open. Our kids should have been in the classroom. Three of the top polling Republicans battling it out on the debate stage once again. Now just weeks until the recall election. The candidates focusing their attacks on Governor Newsom. The shortage of labor right now is such that people are wage. <laughs> John Cotton is using this in his advertising. He's ignoring the fact that he can't produce electricity, he can't produce water. Once again, missing from this showdown, front runner Larry Elder, who hasn't shown up to any debates. And now bombshell accusations no have been leveled against the conservative talk show host by his ex fiance. I truly believe that he, that he could kill me and he, that he could hurt me badly. 
Elder's ex-fiancé and accuser is Alexandra Dadig, a conservative blogger and commentator. She first made her allegations in a Politico story. We spoke with her about those claims. Dadig says she and Elder lived together for 18 months. The 51-year-old says she broke it off in 2015. He was physically abusive. He pushed me in the hallway. Um, he, he went to check if his gun was loaded in my plain view uh, during a conversation. And it wasn't a, a yelling shout or shouting match. It was a conversation, but he was just so filled with anger. Dating says Elder had anger issues and was a heavy pot user. She tells us she was too scared to come forward before, but is now because she wants voters to know the truth. I wanted to call the police, but I didn't because I didn't want headlines because I was dealing with somebody who was very powerful, who was in the media. Larry uh, abused me to a point where my, my confidence was eroded. My recovery was on the line. Elder denies the accusations, releasing a statement that reads in part, I have never brandished a gun at anyone. I grew up in South Central. I know exactly how destructive this type of behavior is. It's not me, and everyone who knows me knows it's not me. Elder has come under fire about his past comments he's made about women in the workplace. Governor Newsom took a shot at a recent appearance. But actually wrote an op-ed saying women are not as smart as men on issues of civic affairs, on issues of economics, on issues of politics. Elder claims those comments were taken out of context and were in reference to a report. Republican contender Caitlyn Jenner, who was photographed Thursday touring the Dixie fire damage and has also not appeared at any debates, said this about the latest accusations against Elder. While Gavin Newsom is a failed governor with a massive corruption and fraud, we have another candidate in the recall that is a violent womanizer and too far right for California. Candidates are running out of time to make... So, damn, Caitlyn Jenner off the top ropes, off the top ropes. Caitlyn Jenner said that he's too far right. He says, Caitlyn Jenner, she, he, she, Caitlyn Jenner says that Larry Elder is too far right for California and that he's a violent womanizer. A violent womanizer who's too far right for California. So Caitlyn Jenner got a kick in, and then you also had Gavin Newsom got a kick in. He said that, what about that damned article where he says that women aren't as smart as men? So Larry Elder, does he actually believe that women aren't as smart as men? Is that possible? Is that what he actually said? Is that what he actually believes? Now, she was, she's 51 years old, thinks that Larry Elder could kill her. And uh, she's a blogger, commentator, thinks Larry Elder could kill her, I don't know, reloading the gun, so within her plain view, reloading the gun in plain view, um, pushing her in the hallway, that's an assault, but I'd like to know, you know, what specifically, what's going on, check the gun to make sure it was loaded, it could have been a menacing thing, it could have been intentional, so he might have assaulted her, and he may have tried to intimidate her, right, so possible intimidation, possible assault, and then the, when she's talking about him being a heavy pot user, and that she wanted her to buy a pot for him, as if like, you know, some sort of, fucking federal crime or some shit. I don't know, a heavy pot user. This makes me like Larry Elder. So that part, I feel like she shouldn't say that part. Just the two parts out. He, you know, reloaded the gun in front of her. So he could have been like, you know, staring at her as he was like, you know, reloading the gun. Or it could have been off to the side and then she thought it was something that it wasn't. Pushed her in the hallway. You know, could be that uh, she's in the hallway, he just shoves her, or could be, you know, something else. But those are the abuse allegations. You want to do process. You want to be able to figure out what's going on. Um, I don't, I'm not going to determine whether or not I think that they're guilty or not guilty. He seems, uh, I don't know, I don't want to actually, I want to, um, I'd like for him to specifically talk about what she's saying specifically, so you'd have to ask pointed questions. Since we won't get that conversation, then the only question right now that needs to be answered is, does this sink Larry Elder's campaign? Does this sink Larry Elder's campaign? Let's listen to this, a bombshell allegation. 
in the California recall election. Let's listen to this Fox 11 news report about the same set of circumstances. And the brandishing a gun at her and a lot more. Our Christy Fajardo spoke with her today. He lacks impulse control and he's dangerous. Larry Elder's one-time fiancé says the public never sees the real him and believes if they did, they say no to his campaign. He's a, he's a despicable human being. I think every, every woman should be afraid of him if she's on his staff uh, because he's, he's really not someone um, who is going to treat women well. Politico was the first to speak to Alex Dating about her 18-month engagement. Now, this is um, a little progressive because he's black and she's white. So I, it's a little progressive. They, when they were dating, it was progressive. Right. That's a good thing. Interracial couples, that's a good thing. But I feel like it's dangerous that she's talking so fucking crazy about him because that's, you know, white woman saying false rape could get him killed. At least that's the historical you know, way of it, and so, um, yeah, she's saying he's despicable, and he's horrible, and was terrible, and could very well kill her, I mean, I feel like I'm not totally convinced of what she's saying, and then I'm not totally convinced that what she's saying is going to sink the campaign, relationships go through hell, she, and I'll, to be honest, she doesn't seem like, you know, she's, uh, goddamn fu fucking, <laughs> You know, little Miss Muffet, you know, she she's not really Polly Pocket. She's not really little Miss Muffet, you know. She's not, um, uh, I, immediately I don't think, okay, she can't handle herself. She's pitiful. She's pathetic. She's just too damn sweet. She's just too sweet for her own good. And she's got some, you know, agency. She can be aggressive. And so I don't, um, I don't see her being a pushover. I don't see her taking anything really, you know, standing, um, sitting down. So, did he push her in the hallway? Maybe. Maybe they're arguing. He walks by her. She's right there. Maybe they kind of nudged each other. Did he check the gun and, you know, was menacing? Because if he did that shit intentionally, right, just shoves her in the hallway, and he sits there, gets the gun, and was like, you know, you think you're strong, don't you? You think you can fuck with me. No, look at, you know, if he's doing that shit intentionally, that is harrowing, that is scary, and that's, uh, you know, that there should be charges, right? That's an assault charge, that's intimidation, menacing, something, harassment, something. So those are charges, and so there's, you know, a uh, case there, a civil case maybe, or criminal charges or a civil case. Now, later on, she's going to mention something about how she feels like Lana Clarkson with Phil Spector. She was like, I thought, I was like, Lana Clarkson, and it was Phil Spector, and it was like, I mean, she's 51 years old, so that's, you know, 12 years older than me, and therefore, I don't, he just died, this, who the hell are these people, I had to look it up, and so, the murder, murder of Lana Clarkson on the mor morning of February 3rd, 2003, American actress Lana Clarkson was found dead at age 40 in the Pyrenees Castle, the Alhambra, California mansion of record producer Phil Spector. In the early hours of that morning, Clarkson had met Spector while working at the House of Blues in L.A. After leaving in Spector's limousine, the two were driven to Spector's mansion and went inside while his driver waited in the car. About an hour later, the driver heard a gunshot before Spector exited his house through the back door with a gun. He was quoted as saying, according to affidavits, I think I just shot her. Spector later said Clarkson's death was an accidental suicide and that she kissed the gun. You see this gun? Yeah, here, let me kiss it. Oops. Accidentally killed herself. The uh, two, apparently two of the 12 jurors would not convict him, so Spectre is tried for the murder of Clarkson in 2007, September 26 of that year. The mistrial was declared due to a hung jury when 10 jurors of 12 favored conviction. So two did not. You needed, it needed to be unanimous. So then you had Phil Spector was tried again for second-degree murder, and that was beginning October 20th, 2008. 
and uh, April 13th, 2009, the jury found Phil Spector guilty of murdering Clarkson on May 29th, 2009. He's sentenced to 19 years to life in state prison, and then Phil Spector is going to die in a prison hospital 2021. So, the murder of Lana Clarkson, how does, okay, so she apparently... She knows exactly how Lana Clarkson had felt at that moment, and then she felt like Lana Clarkson at that moment, and uh, felt like I was Lana Clarkson. <laughs> at the very least, it's it's lame. It's a lame reference, but um, I I don't I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> You know, R.I.P. to Lana Clarkson. She didn't deserve to die, and I'm sure it was, you know, harrowing and scary. It's just that, I don't know. She's not likable. She's not a likable person. I don't know if I would watch a YouTube show of this lady. I would not vote. You know, I don't think I would vote for her. She just doesn't come across as likable. But then, you know, she's sitting there saying he did, you know, this shit to her. So maybe nobody comes across, you know, likable when they're sitting there saying, you know, person. But, uh, you know, just... And the and uh, the most important question, the most important question is, does this sink his campaign? Can you push a woman and still get elected governor? Can you check a gun in the presence of a woman and still be elected governor? I feel like... You know, both of those could easily just be explained away uh, when push comes to shove, pushed her in her hallway. What was that? What was the argument? What was going on? Check the gun to see what if it was loaded. Was it intentional? Were you giving her looks as you was checking the gun? What was that about? And that would, you know, a court of law, adjudicate this, get on Judge Judy. I don't know. I don't think we're going to get the, you know, get to the bottom of it. But ultimately, it's not the, you know, it's not the worst of the worst. I don't know. To me, it doesn't seem like it's the worst of the worst. I don't think it's going to sink Larry Elder's campaign, if anything. The heavy pot user part, he's a marijuana user. He's a marijuana user. I mean, you're not, I mean, it's in uh, California, so that was, you know, that used to be something, but not really. California's always had, like, medical marijuana and shit, so I... I don't know. I um and then uh, plus he smokes a bunch of marijuana. Okay, so what is that supposed to mean? And to the conservative radio star, she says she signed an NDA, but is speaking anyway because the elder she knows is volatile, smokes pot daily, and even wanted her to buy it for him. The breaking point, she says, was when he brandished a gun at her after an argument and made sure she saw it was loaded. I truly had a Lana Clarkson moment where I felt like he was going to be Phil Spector and I was going to be Lana Clarkson. In a statement, Larry Elder... You know, that's a little bit different. Uh, it wasn't just, uh, you know, loading the gun in plain sight, but it was doing it intentionally. So, I don't know, that's uh, brandishing a gun. Brandishing a gun, you see this gun? <laughs> see? It's got the bullets in it. It's a clip. <laughs> it's loaded. You see this is a gun? It's loaded. So that's the crime. Brandon said, did he point the gun at her? Did he say he was going to do anything? Was he just, you know, loading the gun? Was he just seeing if the gun was loaded? You should check to see, you know, that's a good thing to check. So, yeah, I think they both, you know, I would like to hear what he would like to, what he would say about it. Um, I feel like they both could be explained away. And then ultimately, that this doesn't sink his campaign, which means Larry Elder could very well still become the governor of California. And this, the, because of the nature of the recall election, I think this only makes him more interesting. I, don't, I think people in California don't know how this shit works. I don't think they realize that if you're voting for the goddamn governor. Arnold Schwarzenegger was the fucking governor for, what, eight fucking years? So he got in there on a recall election and then, you know, ruled uh, goddamn California for eight fucking years and shit. So do you want a progressive California? Or do you want a, is this what, Donald Trump? California's going to have a Donald Trump moment? And the Donald Trump that they're going to pick is Larry Elder? Is Larry Elder the, you know, Eric Adams of... California. So let's listen to more of this report. It's her allegations, saying, quote, I have never brandished a gun at anyone. I grew up in South Central. I know exactly how destructive this type of behavior is. 
it's not me, and everyone who knows me knows it's not me. These are salacious allegations. People do not get into public the life precisely the because of, of this area. type of politics and, and it should be designed for your needs. I am not That's going why to we dignify this with a response. It's beneath me. While my opponents and the Newsom campaign would love to keep voters distracted, I am going to stay focused on the issues that inspired 1.7 million Californians. So you can add on as you recall. go. Head on over to globalindustrial.com to find the right bench for your space. 1.7 million Californians. 1.7. Michael R. Blood, the Associated Press, LOS Angeles. The f okay. If it wasn't true, and if it's not him, then why didn't he dispute it six years ago? Dating insists it was part of their separation agreement, but admits she never filed a police report. At the time, not wanting to be thrust into the spotlight, but says with Elder leading the recall pack, silence no longer feels like an option. But I'm horrified that, that, that if we have a Larry Elder as governor of the state of California, this state is going to take a hit with a wrecking ball. Dating, who at one point was also Elder's producer, is very vocal about her support for the recall, but she says she is backing one of Elder's GOP rivals. She also did not shy away from her past. She was a witness in the Hollywood Madam Heidi Slice case and says her experience as a victim of human trafficking is part of what compelled her to come forward. In Marina Del Rey, Christy Fajardo, Fox 11 News. Wow. Okay. Um, so there you go. There's a little bit about Larry Elder. I think he's going to withstand these allegations. It doesn't speak his campaign unnecessarily gives him even more attention when we didn't want any attention on him to begin with. But who else is it going to be? If Gavin Newsom is thrown to the curb, who are the Republicans going to pick? Larry Elder. They're going to pick Larry Elder.